the number of people getting married is on a steady decline, with the number of church weddings falling steadily over a decade. So I wonder, what difference does it make when the royal family have a wedding? Does it make marriage seem more attractive to young people? Lots of people have spoken about how this broke the mould. Meghan Markle, very, very different from what we've seen before Prince Harry. I think very different from your stereotypical royal. Well, let's speak to Michaela Hyde from the Marriage Foundation, which campaigns to promote marriage as the key to social stability in the UK. Michaela, very good to hear you. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. What did you make of the wedding? Oh, I thought it was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. I was, I am, I'm quite soppy actually. I find these sort of things quite emotional. So uh, I thought it was beautiful, um, and that was a really special time. And I think, as you said, it, it it did feel very different from many other sort of uh, royal weddings that we've seen. There was a real break with tradition. There was a real life and energy to um, the the kind of the address or the preach really from um, Michael Curry, um, which I think actually really surprised people. And clearly, from the number of people on the streets, they're excited to see um, Harry and Meghan make that key commitment. And of course, um, commitment is a big, big part of relationships working and lasting, which is what we at the Marriage Foundation continually come back to, that the commitment point, that's the key to making marriages work and last in a way that no other relationship has. The Archbishop of Canterbury who officiated him, we'll hear some of his words shortly, he of course made that point that they were making the vows and the commitment to each other, but he turned to everyone else who was there, the friends, the family, and said, look, you're part of this commitment as well. So let me ask you, what's the effect of a big royal wedding like this? We don't get many of them. Do you think there is an effect? Um, I do, actually. I mean, and that's sort of not just not my hunch, but I mean, literally when we had um, William and Kate getting married in 2011, there was a massive increase in the year after. So in the first quarter, there was an increase um, in, in marriages of 20, 25%. In the second quarter, 13%. And when we literally haven't seen increases like that since the war. So it was incredible. And it, it demonstrates actually that sort of um, external events can influence those private decisions at home, whether you've got people sitting at home thinking that looks amazing let's do the same I don't know but clearly there was an impact um you know sort of sort of in 2012 and I think with the popularity that Meghan and Harry have and and the way that the wedding was done everything about it I think made it very appealing so I would absolutely inspect expect there to be an increase following their wedding and what Sorry, go on. I was going to say the African-American Bishop Michael Curry, I mean, that was very, very different indeed. But he, at the end, basically said two people fell in love and we all turned up. And, of course, that is where something that is unlike anyone else's life suddenly becomes like everyone's life and like other people's marriage. So I wonder if you can address a contradiction that I see here, Michaela, which is Mm. why the public appear to love a royal wedding so much. Not everybody. I've had loads of people saying I would do anything to avoid it. But two billion (laughs) audience around the world... How come there is so much love and affection for that when actually fewer and fewer people are getting and staying married? That's such a good question, Andrew. And I think ultimately it comes down to a couple of things. I mean, partly I do believe there is a big aspiration to to be in that, in that kind of relationship that actually we, all of us, we want reliable love. There's that instinct within us. Um, I've done a lot of schools work in the past with teenagers and you ask them how, how many of you want to be married, not just, you know, be with someone forever, be married. Most of their hands go up. There is an aspiration that, that we have um, to have that reliable love. And it, when we see it demonstrated in the way we did yesterday, people just gravitate towards that. But it's interesting when we think about marriage rates, what we're finding, what we've found at the marriage Marriage Foundation is that actually um, there's actually a, a divide, if you like, between those who are low income and high income. So amongst those who are in a high income bracket, let's say so around about 43,000 and above, 87% of those are still getting married. So actually there isn't a significant change. That continues as it always has done. Where there's been a shift actually is in the low income and at the very bottom sort of income brackets of 16,000 and below, where we've got our 87, um, 87% in that high income, we've only got 24% um, percent in that low income bracket. So there are less people um, in that low income bracket that are actually choosing to get married. And we'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Michaela, I could speak to you all morning. Michaela Hyde from the the Marriage Foundation, uh, the uh, organisation which uh, I think has a very interesting aim, which is to campaign to promote marriage as the key to social stability in the UK. Very interesting to get Michaela's thoughts.